Kwaibum State Governor Udom Emmanuel is appealing to the federal government to rehabilitate the Kalabai 2 road, which is almost giving way as a result of erosion. The governor made this appeal during an inspection of the road. He says the road is an important federal road and deserves to be given attention, especially as it connects to other states. Kalabai 2 road under serious threat from gully erosion. The erosion has eaten deep into the road and it's deteriorating. The condition of this major road has attracted the attention of the state governor, Emmanuel Udom, and he is not pleased with the present situation. This is a major natural I mean, disaster that we're experiencing in this part of the country. Uh, what bothers me most is that this is the busiest commercial highway in the entire South South. So, this happening right now means that the entire commercial activities in this area is grounded. He wants the federal government to intervene by bringing back the life of the road. This road is also a major taking the agri products to people in this other area up to the south, south, the southeast are all feeding from this road. Don't also forget the quarries in this axis that supplies granite to the entire south, south and southeast is this same road. So if you really uh, analyze uh, what, how important this road is to the entire south, south and southeast, you could actually see that it's one road that the federal government must do something urgently. This road is a major link between Akwai Bom and Cross River. It's also a gateway to the northern part of the country. With its high economic importance, it'll be good that government moves into action to resuscitate it fast. The Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, and the Nigeria Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, NUPEG, have agreed to enforce the inspection of all petroleum trucks and regulation of speed limits with effect from September the 1st. FRSC and NUPEG came to the agreement at a national summit on the haulage industry in Abuja, the nation's capital city. FRC Corps Marshal Oyeyemi Boboye says his organization will collaborate with the Vehicle Inspection Office to ensure adequate capacity development training among officers. He adds that the training will enable efficiency to appropriately check vehicles for faulty parts. Our correspondent, Gloria Mezuki, reports. The growing number of road crashes caused by petrol truck drivers across the country has been of concern in the country. Many say most of the accidents by the petrol truck drivers are caused by overspeeding, careless driving and lack of knowledge of road signs. But the Federal Road Safety Corporation added brake failures to the list of causes at the summit centered on haulage operations. The trailers are not designed for Nigerian roads to be more than 30 tons. And what you see today, 30 tons, that is giving you 600 bags of cement. What we experience now is that some trailers are carrying 100 bags of cement. You can imagine because the alignment, the synchronization is not there again. That's from 1st of September. Any tanker that is not fitted with a speed limiting device will not be allowed to load in any of the depots. Nigerians have commended the speed limits device introduced by the FRSC, but still blame the Vehicle Inspection Office VIO for their seeming inefficiency in checking the tankers that often ply the roads. Instead of uh, the blame game, what we should took to do is collaborate, have synergy, all agencies put in uh, machinery in motion to see that uh, we do our work. I know equal in terms of the infrastructure available or the enforcement tit of the, uh, the VIO and nationwide. So uh, I want to use this forum to draw the attention of state governments that there is need for them to empower the VIOs. Other participants, including National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, Nigeria Union of Road Transport Workers, appeal to the government to help in areas of training of petroleum truck drivers and discontinue attacks on its members. We are talking about training, inspection of vehicles, disallow uh, rickety or this uh, on roadworthy truck along our highway. That is what we are talking about. We have won our members across the country. Even if you are attacked by anybody, you either security agents, whatever, whatever, just come and tell us the leadership. We know how to approach and settle the matter. This statistics is another reminder of how much the country needs to do to ensure compliance of traffic rules and bring back sanity on the roads. Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. 
The Chartered Institute of Personnel Management, CIPM, now has a new president and chairman of the council. He is Mr. Anthony Arabome, who was confirmed at the Institute's 17th investiture held in Lagos. The new president says his top priority will be the accreditation of the professional diploma and the human resource practitioner's license to authenticate the CIPM certification. The mood is right for the 17th investiture of the President and Chairman of Council of the Chartered Institute of Personal Management, CIPM. After the roll call of members of the high table, the immediate past president of the Institute opens the event with a riveting speech. We promote the science and practice of HR and we also foster investigations and research into human resource management. We maintain very high standards of practice. We monitor, we control what happens in the discipline. And that's the main reason for the gathering. The newly installed president and chairman of council, Anthony Arabome, is decorated by some of the past presidents of the institute. When he gets on the podium to speak, he reveals his top priority for the Institute. Public policy and advocacy. Accreditation of our Institute's qualification, especially in the public sector, which has the tremendous potential to revolutionize HR practice in the public sector and reposition the economy to deliver on the many areas of expectations that it solely needs to deliver on. Engaging government on strengthening the linkage between the educational sector, the gown, and the industrial sector, the town. A prerequisite for addressing, over the long term, significant macroeconomic issues confronting our nation, especially unemployment. Back in the hall, the ceremony winds down with a clear reality for the new CIPM president and chairman of council to prove his mettle as long as his tenure lasts. Loretta Chiogo, Channels Television News. Next on the News at 10, our business stories. First Bank. You first. Welcome to Business News. All markets on Broad Street have turned bearish today ahead of tomorrow's 80.2 billion naira debt auction by the Debt Management Office. Treasury yields have headed north. Interbank also climbed and stocks dipped as investors hit the set sell button on all set assets. Now market liquidity tightened opened the week around 132.4 billion naira on the back of Treasury's auction conducted by the central bank. Today, yields and treasuries climbed to 12.8%, while bonds finished flat. At the interbank window, overnight rates shot up around 200 points to 14.6%, as traders struggled to fill bid positions for the coming auctions. River State Governor Nyesem Wike has promised investors that his cabinet will soon visit the two seaports located within the state's territory to determine their level of activities and also meet with the officials of the port authority. Governor Wike promised investors who visited him on Monday that the two port facilities to be resuscitated have huge economic potentials for River State. According to the governor, his administration is ready to do everything possible to see that the local seaports have revived in order to divert some of the cargoes from Lagos to the country's home maritime bud to River State. Meanwhile, electricity consumers under the Kedja Electricity Distribution Company may have to prepare to pay more 
for the power they consume. And this is because the electricity company has issued a public notice of intention to review tariffs in line with the guidelines by the industry regulator, the NERC. The notice by Kedja Electric states that customers within its network are advised to forward their comments on planned tariffs review to the distribution company within two weeks. According to the electricity company, the exercise will review the existing tariff structure and arrive at cost-reflective payment for all classes of customers. Ikeja Electric becomes the second power distributor in Lagos to plan that tariff review. A similar move has been considered by the Eco Electricity Distribution Company with network territory largely comprising the city's central business district. EcoBank's share price has gone up from 16 Naira to 23 Naira, an increase of about 38%. And this is according to the company's chairman, Mr. Emmanuel Ikazobo. Mr. Ikazobo revealed this at the first ever get-together with key stakeholders. The gathering is to prepare the bank for its annual general meeting in Tanzania in June. This is the first pre-annual general meeting of Ecobank Transnational Incorporated and its shareholders. With the exchange of pleasantries, the business of the evening begins. The chairman of Ecobank Transnational Incorporated, Mr. Emmanuel Ikazobo, announces a 38% increase in the company's share. Most of you shareholders will be pleased that your share price has gone up, at least in Nigeria, from 16 Naira or 17 Naira, 17 Naira on that day, which was the 30th of June, and today, as at yesterday, it is 23 Naira, 27 Kobo, which is about 38% increase. The company has also recorded other fees. The return on equity has improved from 15% in 2014 to 19% as at this first quarter. And this is going to increase. Our non performing loans ratio has gone down to less than 4%. And this is the secret behind all of that. The group is working on impairments. The group is working on its people. Our academy in Lome is now alive with very good training uh, programs for our people. Because we want to be the employer of choice, we want to hire the best, train and retain the best. That is the only way we can grow uh, the institution. Whatever challenges that may be anticipated, Mr. Ikazobo offers assurance of a better future. The potential for trans regional business growth. When we get our three-way synergy rights are enormous and we look forward to actualizing this for the benefit of all our shareholders. And while they wine and dine, discussions also continue on raising the bar of the Pan-African Bank. Well, academics, legal professionals and policy leaders have asked the Nigerian government and the legislature to give adequate recognition to intellectual properties and also update existing copyright laws relating to the creative sector. Addressing a cross-section of intellectuals at a forum in Nigeria's digital economy and the copyright system, the body of experts explained that Nigeria's economic growth can be fast-tracked by giving maximum protection to investors that the level of weight and importance put on IP matters is commensurate with what is required in a modern economy, which is a digital economy. We can no longer be operating on laws that are practically colonial, <laughs> laws that are anachronistic, outdated, no longer in compliance with the rapid development in the uh, digital world? Well, first, we need stakeholders to organize themselves. 
the critical stakeholders, the lawyers, the people who produce property rights and uh, pro uh, property, intellectual property, uh, those kinds of people uh, have to act together in a way to make the system realize what benefits accrues to all, to the whole system. Because one of the real problems, why we've not recognized the level of output coming from places like Nollywood for quite uh, a while, is because there's very little revenue flowing to government from them. Nigerian equities market reversed its three-day gain as it closed negative today at 333,602.67 points. Christy Kokopola tells us more. Hello and welcome to the Stock Markets Report. Nigeria's equities market reversed its three-day gain, closing in the red, down 0.35% to close at 33,602.67 points. Forte Oil leads the gainers' table with a Naira 89 Kobo share price appreciation. Corn Oil gained 95 Kobo, while the share price of Cement Company of Northern Nigeria went up 49 Kobo. Now, on the decliners' table, Steplat led with an Eight naira loss. Nigeria Brewers lost one naira ninety seven kobo, while Okomo Oil shed one naira sixty one kobo. Now to the volumes chart, Guarantee Trust Bank sold seventy one million shares. UBA sold thirty nine point five million, while Mobile sold seventeen million shares. At the close of trading, investors had exchanged two hundred and forty million shares, valued at six point six billion naira in three thousand nine hundred and fifty seven deals. And that's the stock market report. I am Christy Cole for Pola. Well, that's it on business news. I'm Anne Mwawadu. The rest of the news at 10 continues in a moment. First Bank. You first. Next on the News at 10, Nigeria's Super Falcons get ready to face the United States in a make or mark march at the FIFA Women's World Cup. That's in sports news. Stay with us. <laughs> 